All right, Henrik. I'm making you a panelist now, so you should see a drop down menu. Looking forward to hearing you and talking to you. Everyone put on their warm clothing because we're going to be talking about the Kondrati of winter with Henrik here. Let's see if I have you muted. Yes, I do. If you're muted. Huh. Steve, can you unmute him? I keep getting, oh, I got it. Unmute. Got you, buddy. Hello, Dale. How are you? Uh, hi, Henrik. How are you, buddy? I'm good. Thanks. And you? Good. Uh, great to Coach? have you back. Uh, oh, Coach, yeah. by, by the way, from what I see, I'm still sharing my screen. So, yeah. um, uh, Henry, if you could share your screen, that's a drop yeah, down menu. There, there, is, there is a button saying, you know, share, share yeah. screen or something like that. If you click on it, you can choose which screen you want to share. And, you know, you're gonna, this way you're going to take the screen from me. Remote, request remote control. Is that it? No. 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 It's called, like, uh, Coach, take the screen from me so I can tell him exactly how it's called. Okay. Where is the thing? Share, okay. I'm sharing now. Yeah, you are, I can confirm. So uh, it's called share, just share. You click on, on the button that says share. Searching, searching. See it, I, it, uh, it, there is a menu that uh, if you mouse, if you uh, the same oh, menu that you unmute. Oh, I unmuted you. That's right. So yeah, if you hover, if you hover your mouse over the bottom of your main screen, that menu should come okay, up. I can see it. Ah, okay, that's why. Okay, I can see something then there. Sure. There we go. Yeah. We yeah. Go. Perfect. Okay, uh, then I choose which screen I want to share. Yes, uh, yes, yeah. it's gonna it's gonna give you a window with all your available screens. Yeah, and just and the highlighted one. Yeah, you, share. you see this one now saying macro update or what do you see? You need did, yeah you do not not in, only need to choose it you need to click share. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, sure. I'm surprised at you, Henrik. <laughs> that I can't figure this out. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Congrats. Right. There you ah, go. there you go. Now you're right. black. I, <laughs> there you oh, go. There we, we go. You. There's your presentation. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Perfect. All right. Uh, you could tell I'm a little agitated and irritable, but I have a gift for you. Mm -hmm. What is that? <laughs> a logo or icon that would be great for you. Okay. So we all know that you're a bear because of what you're looking for, deflation. Mm -hmm. But you're also talking about the Gondrati of winter. Yeah. So why not use a polar bear right now as your icon? Because it says both. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I could do All that. Right, so you take the body of the polar bear. Yeah. And then you, and then you, you know, uh, shop it and put your head on top instead of the bear's head. And Th you'll be that's me. I, I got to do that. You got you. No, really? Don't you think it's a good idea? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. You're right. <laughs> I'm just not so creative like you. Think that's huh? fine, so. Well, not you, so creative. <laughs> you're creative. You're creative. So I'm looking forward to an update. You know, there's been a little yep. heat and yep. uh, may as well address the elephant in the room. And, uh, you know, some people mm. saying, oh, they didn't buy gold because you were bearish. And, you know, uh, people can't, uh, you're not controlling anyone else's mouse. Mm. Um, and they didn't sign power of attorney to you and everything's time frame. So, uh, I'm interested in what you're seeing. Uh, I was looking for a little higher to short gold, but you know, there's still a lot of bulls out there. Mm. So, uh, let's see what you're thinking from here. Sure. Henry, I, I'm, I bet not much has changed. No, no, much, much has changed. Actually, I think what we've seen, <clears throat> if you look from, uh, Q3, Q4, uh, has been a bounce in, in the, in the first part of the deflation, uh, that we, that, that we started to see folding, unfolding. Um, yeah. but let me get back to that. So first of, you know, you're absolutely right. You know, the Kondratiev, oh, God, now my thing is not moving here. Oh, there we go. So nothing has moved, uh, nothing has changed in terms of uh, my view on the, uh, on the Kondratiev winter. Um, I think some of the things that we are expected to see start to unfold. Uh, I still remember, you know, a few years back calling for a trade war. Um, it didn't seem like anything like that could unfold. 
I still think that we have some of the biggest events uh, ahead of us, uh, and one of the things that will be a pension fund crisis. Uh, so, so we we are not there yet. So, any in the U.S. or gl- or globally? Globally, globally, okay. also in the U.S. Yeah. So uh, okay, so uh, all these pension funds, like you know, we have a small insurance fund that mm. could not cover, you know, one one thousandth of the mm. pension pension guarantee something insurance. Um, why are are is it the same reason? that pension funds are underfunded everywhere else in the world because uh, we had this repression of yields and they just were not able to generate enough return to keep it solvent? I, th- I think that's absolutely to the point. I'm no expert in that field, but I'm just trying to lay out the things that would be normal events unfolding in a contractive winter. But you're absolutely right. So being able to, you know, deliver the yield, uh, the return that they they have been promising, also, so the um, so that's 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 what I see as part of the um, of of that problem. Is and if you see equities start to fall, you know, hard that I do at some point, <clears throat> then um, then probably that will be something that will worsen that problem for them. Yeah, because they uh, because of this repression, people have been forced to take more risk to try yes, and generate exactly. the same return. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. All right, so, so uh, uh, go ahead. Yeah, so we we're still there. We 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 haven't come to the fine to the to the to the end of that, and and that means that the main conclusion still remain the same. So we are we we still see the the uh, one more deflationary bust in this winter, and I'll come back to that. We'll see king dollar will reign for some time. We'll see all the currencies you know around the world will decline versus the dollar, and we'll see oil, copper, precious metals, commodities drop, and a lot. We will have Europe as the as uh, the epicenter of the crisis, and we'll see, of course, central banks react to deflation, and this will eventually end deflationary um, uh, developments. But it will not end the crisis because the crisis will then turn into something which is not something we've seen for some time, but a stagflationary crisis where we will see the economy slump, but we'll see prices starting to move up. Um, and I'll get into why I see uh, that particular scenario. Isn't that happening already with, uh, before even the trade war started? I mean, I, I don't think so. For food. Yeah. I, I don't think so. For housing, but you yep. don't think it's even started yet. Not yet. It You'll won't see- start until the dollar peaks. We, it won't start until the dollar peaks and until the commodities uh, uh, bottoms. bottoms out. Yeah, okay. and that's it. So, um, so, so why? First of all, in January, I said, well, this is what we can see from from oil, uh, and I expected to have some kind of bounce. So I actually expected it to be, you know, this blue line you have here in 2019, not to be a move up, uh, but 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 to be more of a sideways movement. It turned out to be more. Um, a strong B wave up, testing the the blue trend line there, and now it's you know we're going to drop, and we're going to drop fast from here. Um, so we're we're going to we we the, the events have started, the bounce that we saw from A to B was the uh, defining the whole uh, scenario, the whole uh, environment that we've been seeing since Q3, Q4, and it was quite expected in in terms of when you have an ending direct diagonal like what we have here, so you have way one down, then you have an ABC to two, you have an ABC down to three, ABC to four, and an ABC down to five. And we're just, okay. you know, at the peak of, five, uh, of B here. And then well, we're certainly to- impulsive this, uh, especially after it t- peaked at 66 and a half and went to 60 yeah. and a half. That rally 61.8 back to 64-ish. The break <laughs> from there yeah. was breathtaking uh, as far as how fast it got from 64. But I think you'll see much more of that and it go very fast. Now we just touched down on this area. So we have out from here from 2017. So this is, of course, a support line. But breaking, when we break through that and I'm, I'm, you know, I feel very confident because this is not just one picture. You remember my model works on on different dimensions and all of them points to the same kind of picture. Actually very much illustrated by a, an ending diagonal for many of the commodities that I can show you here. So so we're going to bounce around here and then we're going to go lower and we're probably going to peek down through this line, meaning which my which has been my my goal target for a long time for oil was below 22. I think there is a chance even we could get to around 10 for the, for, for gold, uh, sorry, for oil. I saw uh, it there once before. Yeah, you probably weren't born, but it broke from 40 to 10. Yeah, uh, I think it was in the 80s. Uh, anyway, your chart doesn't go that far back. No, no. I'm older than your charts. Um, <laughs> let's see. So uh, uh, I I wanted to ask you a little bit about the time of it. Mm-hmm. So you mm-hmm. see this manifesting 
by the end of this year, early next year? Well, I think the timing perspective of this has been what has been hardest for me also with my Euro call. I mean, it, it has been more resilient uh, than I've been expecting. Um, but but if you look at the um, if you look at the structures of this, it's quite telling. So could we bounce around here for some weeks? Yes, I think so. But in general, I think we are, you know, the general trend here is that we're going down in, in oil. And, and you'll see that when I get onto the other commodities that they show exactly the same kind of picture. Uh, but time-wise, I, uh, I would guess, my guess would be Q4, Q1, 2020. Okay, that's a good way, you know, for a major turn like this. And, you know, yeah. people don't understand it uh, because they trade off 60-minute charts. But mm. when you're making a major call of intermediate-term nature, if you can uh, be in the right window for 30 days or so, to be alert for it, not just exactly. jumping on it. Mm. That's pretty good for a long-term call to narrow it exactly. down to a 30, 60 day. And this, is what, and this, you know, if you look at these bigger pictures here with the ending di diagonals, they actually tell a, they tell a story that we're going to see another low. That's the deflationary bust that I see. But then right. this, this structure in itself would tell us that the bullish. next, it's bullish. Yeah, it is. When yeah. we get down here, it's very, very bullish. But yeah. that shows that we're going to have a bust first and it'll yeah. be tough on us because we're going still from, you know, 70 almost up here and then down to, I don't know, 22 or, or even, you know, lower. But that is deflationary. And that's why I've been calling for the deflationary fallouts uh, and deflationary uh, environment. And I let me show you some of the other things that I have here. Okay. So, um, I mean, copper, you know, yeah. copper, yeah, it's right. You know, it's the same thing here. We yeah. have a structure with an A, B, and C. We have a, an ending diagonal, expanding diagonal here. So it's a one, two, three, and a four. We back tested it, we dropped. So this is right. one, then we have two, and now we're going to see a very strong decline. This was what wow. I showed in January. And I think, yeah, I think actually things is going to go really quick I, from here. I thought I was extreme up uh, at the end of the year. I, I, I said that uh, Dr. Copper was getting sued for malpractice by hmm. hating a bull market. But look uh, at it. We, we, yeah. oh, sorry. Yeah. So I thought one, two, you know, 260 was a big call back then, 250. Mm. But, mm. uh, okay, you're looking for a buck or lower on copper. Oh, much lower. I think this is going to go below 2008. This is a worse crisis, a more larger deflationary bust than what we saw in 2008. And, you know, the reason is simple you have a larger debt around the world this time. You have already, you know, the, the, the um, interest rates are, you know, as low as they can go. I mean, there is not much to do about this. So it will take a whole lot more of a, you know, a small QE or some rate rise before the, the central banks will be able to turn this around. And they know that. I, I think they know that. That's why they have been staring into this. That's why they panic already. Uh, but, you know, I hear so many things uh, you know, on, on FinTwit on, well, when, you know, the central banks won't allow this. But, well. They didn't allow it in 2007 to 2008. In 2007, they started from 575 Fed lowering rates, and still we had Lehman collapsing in September 2008, one year later, and they have brought you know uh, rates down to two. Okay, so, so uh, you know uh, the is what we're seeing right now the effects of the mistake the Fed made by raising rates. I don't know how many times and embarking on quantitative tightening that even though they say they're going to stop QT, I think in September, that the lag effects from what they did years ago is what's starting to show up in the market. So <clears> therefore, <throat> when they flip, hmm. won't it take time for us to make that transition from a deflationary bust into stagflation? It will take a little time uh, from, you know, so when... When they, int you know, there is, I'll put it like this, Fed intervene, uh, intervened in uh, 2007, September, by starting to lower rates. But it wasn't until the moment when they brought in QE that market reacted to it for real and started to bounce for, from there. And even it went lower, you know, that into to 2009. Even. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So yeah. it's not a, it's not a mag magical key they have. It's not something they can just turn and then, you know, things will, will, will turn better. It's a super tanker that needs to be turned. And yeah, the things, and the, it takes time, yeah. So they might start to lower, of course, they will start to lower rates first, and they might be, even be a little aggressive on it. And we could see things, you know, drop, and they might try to, you know, start some QE even, and it will not change the direction, direction of the economy. Remember, during QE3, 2012, 2013, gold still fell around 32, 33%, I think 31%. 
so you know they cannot micromanage the inflationary uh, environment. When this thing turns down and it's about to do just that, look at the RS uh, stock stochastic here, and also RSI could could be looked like it uh, is going down. I mean, if this when this turns down, it is not something they can stop just by by lowering rates or anything like that. Um, so so I don't see that. Let me move on because I got a, quite a lot of slides here. Um, what is that? We, so we had the other Aussie dollar that was back in January. I said, okay, we're going to see it break down through this trend line here mm -hmm. uh, and move much, low, much lower. I still see that. We broke down below that. We have been now bouncing a bit for a week or something like the two or something. It's about a part of this back testing. When that turns down again, it's going to go much, much lower. And I, I think we could go at as low as 0.48-ish area here, which will be very uh, deflationary also. <clears throat> okay. And, and please China, look, And China will suffer too. Oh, yeah. If, oh, yeah. If Aussie is going to suffer, it's because China is going to suffer. China is going to suffer. Okay. So do you think the trade war ends or the trade war continues and, uh, and China suffers as well? I don't think the trade war is really about trade. I think the trade war is about geopolitical, uh, you know, uh, challenges and issues. And you know, so it depends on whether you, we, they sit down. It, it's not. It's not about trade. Uh, so yeah, it'll be going on from here on. I'm, I'm okay. pretty sure. Right. Uh, I, yeah. All right, and then and also looking at the commodities CRB here. This is also the same kind of you know diagonal we have ending diagonal. We'll have yeah. another bust down. We saw how we broke down this blue line. We retested it, and then we started. To, we saw a, a, quite an acceleration last week, and we have a negative divergence from from this one to this. So we we are we are um, the things are you know the, it's it's written in the in the chart. I would say we have also for wheat here the same kind of the ending diagonals. It shows up everywhere, and to me it tells me really that we are about to see a secular secular turn here and this is why i'm going to talk about stagflation at some point because this is the point where where the the deflationary forces will be played full out and the inflation is the secular inflationary uh, trend will start to move up so well, when I, we get I'm, down, I'm going to become joseph down there buddy <laughs> and and fill those silos Oh yeah, 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 sure. But retest of this, you know, the area from out here and having it, yeah. which will, you know, coincide with a throw over of uh, the ending diagonal here is, is you know, A, B, C. We we got the structures here. It's it, this was an A. This is the inflationary bounce. Everybody, you know, is getting into and say, well, now we now we've bought, we've bottomed out. I don't think so. Right. I think we're going to go lower. Okay. So. Um, and, and then we're getting into, so if we look at all these inflation gauges, they all seem like they could be going low, seem like they could be going lower. And then we had this, you know, with gold moving up. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, really gold follows the, and also if you look in 2008, yeah. gold follow the rest of the, the rest of the pack. Yeah. Oh, okay. There might, there might be some different, you know, structures to how it, they do it, but the bot, they bottom together, they top together and they, you know, they decline or drop hard together. And, and what I see is that when copper oil, Aussie, uh, commodities, you know, all are turning down, uh, wheat and so on. This is in, you know, that's disinflationary. And if you look at what gold really respects, that's real rates. And if you look at a, a scenario where you have nominal rates equal as they are, I don't think actually I could see a spike in them uh, for, for some time, but even as, you know, being equal and with uh, inflation moving down or even seeing dis dis disinflation or deflationary uh, uh, developments, then you can have real rates moving up, and gold will not like that. So, I don't, I don't give too much of you know. Uh, I can, I really do not see the fundamentals for for gold moving uh, much higher than we have here. Well, and, the technicals telling you then, if you don't. Yeah, well, the, the, te the technical, the technical tells me this story here. So, if you look at gold for a very long perspective here, you always have an A B C pattern for a um, for a, a, a correctional move. And if you look at gold, you have had the one, two, three, four, and a five. And then you had A, B, C, D, E, which is equivalent to this, uh, a, which is a zigzag pattern. One, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, D, E. So we're here. And we're going to see a very big drop. And then we're going to dro drop it maybe into an, uh, into a, an ending diagonal. What, is also what if we break out over both the trend line and the resistance? at 1380 wherever it is you have a b above it could it Here. do that and then fail yes there's no way uh, let me put it like this that this is the beginning of a new bull market anybody saying that will be you know 
will be proven wrong, I think. But we could go to 1450. We could go to 1415, yeah, or 1550, yeah. yes. But, okay. but, not, but not in a triangle, no. Then you could not. Then this okay. is not a triangle. Then this will be a... Um, then it'll be a zigzag correction. This one will be a zigzag correction. Okay. Not, uh, then this one will be, so this should be something like A and then an A, B, C, D, but we should still move down there again once more time before moving up. Okay. Why, so not, the, why not triangle being B in an ABC? Which one, sorry? The triangle can yeah, be a B one. in an ABC. So it is, it is B. No, 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 no. I, I mean in the move higher that you've depicted, not the A, B, C that you have in circles. So an A, B, and then C? An A, which finishes where you have A. Yeah. The higher A, I mean, the one in parentheses. So that being an A, <coughs> then the rest of the triangle being an A, B, C, D, triangle as a B. So, so we, should end up, we should end up down here for the B. Yeah, then. And, yeah. And, then, and then another move higher as a C. But then what comes after, because A, B, C is always correctional move. Oh, yeah. So and then you move lower. Yeah, yeah. I, but I mean, but there's also this, because I was answering that's what today. I'm saying. I was that's answering what I'm saying. Today that, you know, you can still move yeah. higher and still be. But, it, yeah. but it, doesn't, it doesn't ring too well with this picture, or this picture, or this picture, or this mm -hmm. picture. So, maybe that's why, maybe that picture is what creates it, and people move to it because maybe the market will come off, mm. and people just move to it out of what else is there to buy there, the, you know, besides bonds. Yeah, but that, that, I don't buy that because then you're, you'll, you'll still see fundamentally, you'll see that, you know, if inflation drops because of weed and everything else, oil is very big component and you even see the housing prices in the U.S. also moving down. I mean, that, that is this, this inflationary, so it, it doesn't oh, okay. ring. I mean, it doesn't really ring. To, I mean, I do not see it. Okay. So I, th I, think, I think that what we're seeing is an A, B, C, D, E here. Uh, we, and there are some rules around where, how high this was going to top. We're still below 60 on the monthly here on RSI. All, all, bear, all, sorry, all bull marks always move above 50 really quick. We have not been above 60. So yeah. what happens is that when we have the B wave here is that, you know, catches people on the wrong direction and it often shows lower volume. So here you have big volume, here you have lower volume. This is a B wave. And then also, if you lo look at E, you very often shows up in horizontal triangles, which is what we have here. So, so often you'll see a false break, but it's really where you see that you have um, the, uh, the, the, the bear traps also setting in. I can see the bottom part. Emotional, it also says something about emotional psychology playing in here. Everybody on FinTrade is bullish gold right now, except me, I think. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, so I think I think this is you know this is it. This is where we're going to top, and and also uh, it tells me if we if you put this up as well, you will also see that if you apply the length of wave A, and take you know the length from this topping here, and take sixty one point eight, which is a normal length, then it will give you right down to this area, which is the bottom of wave four. So there are so many Elliott wave type of indications that we are going to go to to this area. Uh, and I think it's going to be rather quick uh, because it's going to be part of a deflationary bust. So again, with oil, with the rest of the deflationary gauges, we're going to see it move far, very fast lower. Um, and, and also everybody being bullish gold now should question themselves what happened to silver. I mean, it moved down, it topped in March, February, March, one, two, three, four, five down. Then it did an A, B and a C and it's even a regular B it seems. Yeah. That means that the down force is strong then it moved up here around the area of old wave, wave four, and then it moved down. You look at the stochastic and you look at the RSI. I think this is a bull, uh, bull trap. Got it. And if so, and then I have some pictures for S&P 500 also. Um, so how does it all play out? Because if I'm, def I, you know, if I have see this deflationary um, uh, game playing out, I, I think I've been calling the top here and the calling almost the top here and being wrong. We're the, boy, we're the boy who cried wolf for a while, buddy. Yeah, that's me. You're talking. About, that's me, or me too. Me, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. we. Okay, yeah, yeah, we are. I mean, but but it's because of the you know what you know dawned on me was that we're going to see an ending expanding diagonal. Um, so okay. you have you know one, two, three, four, and then you actually have an you know a wave five, which uh, which is consisting of one, two, three, four, five. So that's why I've been calling for some time now for maybe a, even a, a high above this trend line. May not go as high. But I think there's a chance it could. So 30. Is that around 3,200? Yeah, something like, yeah, 30, 
30, 40, something like oh, that. Oh, okay. Barely a new high. Okay. Yeah, barely barely yeah. a new high. Just just above, just to this area around that, okay? okay. Could, it doesn't need to, to move all the way up here. I mean, we already, you know, uh, the, you know the, this triangle is uh, di ending diagonal is already uh, So everything's going to go down together. They just have different starting points on the race. Yeah, that's what I see, unfortunately. Okay. And, and if, right. you look at the, no, if you look fine. at the... If you look at the wicks, wicks, sorry, um, yeah. it seems also again like the uh, this, this kind of ending diagonal one, two, three, four, and then we have an A, B, and a C again. With a throw over here, would be you know every all you know pushed down in, in terms of volatility, uh, which could coincide with as you know a new high. Some really soon, yeah. I think, we could move up really quick, but that's really the time to to get out um, of of everything here. So, um, and then when it comes to the euro. This was what I said in January. Um, still, still there. I mean, we have moved lower. Um, what I think we're seeing is that again we have a A B C here, so it's a W. It's actually um, a double six, I think it is. <clears throat> we see for the, the in the major picture, and what they are made up of are A B Cs. So this one here goes from um, down to C is going to be. Um, uh, five waves down to C, and I'm going to to hit down here around this level from uh, from the 2000 or around that area. Um, and you can also see this is a big topping area, topping pattern. So you have above the the black line here when it drops below around this area in 2014, I think it was. You know that yeah. set target for around this area. So it, we're going to see quite a strong um, strong. Um, What's a catalyst for the euro crisis, Deutsche Bank? Are you there, Henrik? You're cutting in and out. Can you hear me? Now Hello? I can. Yeah, now I can. Okay. Let me try to go to... Can you hear me? Dave? Yeah, I can hear you, yes. yes. All right. So what? The, the kind of pattern I think we're seeing is is this one, uh, which is a very complex one. And that's why I think it's been difficult for many uh, analysts and, and Elliot waivers to, to understand what's really going on. And many are calling for much higher level on, on the euro. I think what we've seen since the the low in November on uh, in, in, in euro is a move up in W here. And then we had the X move here. And then we have actually an expanding diagonal here for the, um, for the last part of it. So A, B, C, D. And then we have an A, B, and then the C up here. So we should top out in this area or maybe a little higher. It can even move all the way up here, but I think we're going to top out around this area. Okay. And that turns, and that together with my, my uh, Dixie uh, looks like this. So you had the, uh, the A around here, the B. And then what we've had here is actually a leading uh, diagonal uh, for, for the first wave. So that's actually part of the first wave up. And if you do that, if we look, observe that, we also see is like a very clear correctional move here correction will move up to B and then we have something here which could be wedging down to the around this area which seems to be okay. around the old four so somewhere around here we should be could be moving up we also seem like stochastic and and, and RSI could be you know moving into position to do exactly that so so ending around here and then moving up really strong and catching a lot of people on the wrong on the wrong wrong side of this 110 is uh, you're one of the super dollar bulls what's your target 107 109 ish yeah that area okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so, um, so that's that's you know that's pretty much what I see. Not not much have changed. Uh, things have not really been developing as fast as I thought it would. They would. I, I mean, I, I would have expected uh, things to move uh, faster, but the the euro uh, have seen more resilient. Uh, I don't know how much you know, we know that there is manipulated by by central banks, but uh, but but things have been dragging out for much longer than expected. Well, I'm a fan, Henrik. You're my trading warrior brother, and uh, as you notice, I have your back. <laughs> and uh, really appreciate you coming here and giving me really a sense of reality because I get a little bit shorter term. Let's see if uh, there are any questions. Uh, from... Okay, copper supports a deflationary move. Okay, mystery traders expects range bound for a year or so, I think. Do you know who he is? I interviewed him once. Anyway. Oh, no, I'm not sure what Mystery. Yeah. Any, oh, anyway. mystery. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mystery. Sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, he has a theory that they want to take every currency to parity for the reset. Do you okay. think there's going to be a reset when the Fed has to act 
Oh yeah, I think I think that what happens will be you know as it, it's back to the to this picture. So it's back of understanding that we're going to see a deflationary phase first, right. and that's when the liquidity will be drying up, and we we are seeing some of that already. But I think it'll you know move much far faster, and then when Fed steps in for real. And we have to consider again the for real is like when they introduced introduced QE. So QE this time is not going to be enough. And the Yeah, instead you know, of it lasting eight years, being effective for eight years, it's gonna be effective for eight months. Yeah, and the you thing is that? the thing is that if you then pair it with the perspective that I have on the different uh it's that going it's going to um happen at a time where commodities will, you know, secularly be bottoming out, and that's why if you if you uh, okay. if the Fed starts some kind of you uh, stimulus, then you're going to have that as a very strong uh, support of the secular uh, you know move up, move higher. Yeah, sounds like you're really. Uh, I know you're going to be. Uh, you said you want to back up the truck for gold at 800. Almost yep. sounds like you're a little bit more constructive agricultural commodities than even gold. <laughs> yeah. Am I right? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean there are so many. All commodities will be yeah. at a very very low level. dart. Exactly. You're short that's the dollar and long anything tangible. Exactly. That that's when we get to the to that point. Okay. But but I but I don't think we're there yet. Yeah, uh, Henrik. Thanks so much for coming by. Uh, the best way for people to follow you. Uh, I know that you mentor. Uh, you can follow Henrik on Twitter at Henrik Zeberg. Where else, Henrik? Well, I uh, do have a WhatsApp list where I have uh, some subscribers where I write out every day and a weekly update. And uh, yeah, then it's, it's on, fit, on, on FinTwit as often as I, I can find the time for it. Okay, buddy. Well, I, I appreciate it. And um, sure makes me want to be raising cash. And, <laughs> yes, and and getting my war chest ready, <laughs> maybe the buying opportunity of the millennium coming. Oh yeah, in. definitely. Okay, thank um, you very much, Dale. Thanks for all right, me. Henrik. Good hunting, buddy. All right, everyone, that's a wrap. All right, uh, no one freak out and jump out of windows. Let's let's capitalize on it, and you know we'll see it. We'll be there, and remember this. Don't just count your pips, count your blessings. You're welcome, Albert. Uh, Drew, if my memory's correct, I think he's talking 5,000. Okay, so that's a wrap. See everyone for Turnaround Tuesday. <clears throat> Adios. Thank you, Henrik. Thanks. <clears throat>